today we're going to start with speaking drills. So if you guys haven't already, please make sure you click on where I said click here for evidence folder and you're going to pull up just any evidence card on there and you're going to read it out loud. And we're all going to sound super duper crazy right now, but that's okay. So we starting. I'm putting 30 seconds on the clock. You just going to grab that evidence and I just want you to read mm -hmm. as fast as you can through it. Any questions? No questions. We're all clear, right? So I'm putting it 30 seconds. I'm not even going to cheat and do y'all a whole minute. I don't know if y'all can see it. I'm really going to put 30 seconds so nobody feels like I'm lying. All right. And let's go. The preponderance of the drug. Medicare for all is the most popular health care all the way back to the Golden Age of Innovations. Those health care costs could skyrocket when facing unexpected and persistent expenses. Only 30 percent of Americans say they have a surprise and important spike on insurance. The average out of the market is 19 out of the network of insurance. The average out of the market is 19 out of the network of insurance. The average out of the market is 19 out of the network of what did you think about reading your first evidence card? <laughs> Who want to tell me? What did you think? Good, Pia? Okay. What did you think about reading your first evidence card? I know it feels crazy because of everybody talking. But what you think? You can put it in the chat if your mic isn't working for some reason, too. Is somebody talking? No? Okay. Well, again, put it in the chat or what did you guys think of the first round through evidence? Good? Okay, we're going to try it again. So here's, and again, you can do these exercises by yourself. This is how you get better at reading your evidence and familiar with it, right? Because the more you read it and the more you play with it, the more you know what you're talking about. So then we're going to try to read it. You're going to look at your card you just read, and I want you to start at the bottom and read it backwards. Ready? <laughs> like, it's not going to make sense. So don't think I'm gonna lick, make any kinds of sense, it's not. So you're gonna read it backwards. Everybody come off mute, let's do it again. Ready? Let's go y'all, 30 seconds on the clock. Let's do this, go. Bills, medical, not or pandemic care. It was more for the years ago, so cap insurance for unnecessary there get good everyone and insurance there keep to just work for steel wooden conditions. What did you think about reading it backwards? Was it harder? Some words I had to repeat because I haven't heard them. That's right, Yara. I didn't get farther. See, it's a challenge, right? It was harder, right? <laughs> Who else want to share what you guys got? I know you sound crazy. Your parents are probably thinking you're in the room making spells, but you're not. You're doing good. <laughs> like, I think I read the wrong thing. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, and then, so I'm going to make this the last one because I want you guys to practice these on your own. Practice them in the mirror. If we were in person, I would usually make you guys like stand up to present because it's easier to get your speaking out when you're standing up and it's like better, like you've never seen Obama give a speech like this. I don't know what you want to show. You never seen that. And if you did, you would think he was suspicious. So you want to be presenting with confidence and showing them like, I've read what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. So this is the last one. And y'all are going to think I'm extremely goofy, but you're going to grab the cleanest pen or pencil near you, as clean as it gets, that only you've been playing with, I hope. Um, <laughs> And you about to put it in your mouth and read that card with that pen in your mouth. You got it? <laughs> like, you're going to pronunciate every word on that card. You're going to read through this card with this in your mouth. Are y'all ready? Last run of practice <laughs> of speaking drills. Okay, 30 seconds on the clock. 
get that card again. Last time to run through it and go. Build miracle from America's position to a large day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. an innovative perspective and centers our social optimism as the pharmaceutical company can appropriate the entire benefit of all New Jersey society. In this case, the pharmaceutical company internalizes all the public and drug All the public benefits and costs are The company stress us on the entire benefit of a new job to society. Time. Time. What did you think about it? I know you feel silly with that pen in your mouth, but what did you think about that? We had time. Anybody feedback? It was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> what, what did you think about reading that, that same card through this time with a pen in your mouth? What did you guys think about it this time, reading it with a pen in your mouth? Easier, harder, what? I could not talk because my pen was too large. Well, that's something, yes. <laughs> like, y'all know you couldn't hear yourself clearly? So as you guys can see, though, as you're practicing with your evidence, it'll get clearer and clearer the more you do it. So even though you feel like a nut in the closet right now, don't worry, it's going to get more easier. So that's our speaking drills for today. And now we're going to go into building our practices. So if you guys are on the agenda for today, you guys are looking at the tournament schedule for next week, which is down at the bottom. No problem, Sophia. You can check on this later and message me if you have any questions. So if you guys look at the schedule, you can see it below. At 9.30 a.m., you're going to log into the Zoom chat. I'm going to share you guys that link for the Zoom. It's already in the bottle master link form, but I'm going to also share it to you guys' emails so you guys will have it there on Saturday. Um, at 10 a.m., we're going to have a student workshop for the first hour. So just like we're doing now, we're going to work together in that first hour of workshop to make sure everybody's prepared. We're going to have some extra guests like we did on workshop last Saturday come in and help you guys break out into groups and get ready. So if you have any last minute questions or you're nervous, you and your partner, whatever, that workshop is going to be where you get all that out. So then from there at 11 a.m., you're going to have your first round. 12 p.m., you'll have your second round. And at 1 p.m., you're going to have lunch. After that, you're going to have at 2 p.m., round three, because you guys have three rounds for the day. Then at 3 p.m., you'll have an award ceremony on Zoom. Um, the way you'll get your awards is the top three people are in gift cards as well as certificates. Everybody earns certificates. If you would like to get hardware trophies, meaning we're still getting trophies made for you guys, but if you would like to pick it up, it would be available the following Friday after each tournament. So if you want your trophy, come pick it up. Or if you're like Maya, Willinky, I'll mail it to us. We can mail it to you too. But we wanted to give that option available for you guys that are like, I would love to pick up my trophy or I want my hardware. You can come meet us downtown at our office and we're going to do like a curbside pickup for you guys. Any questions about that? About tournament, what to expect, what we doing? So yes, you'll still be using tab room like William went over. I need your guys' tab room accounts. You can slack it to me um, if you're having issues with that. Yes, Yara, that's fine. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know about tournament. So partnerships are at the bottom of this document. So I know a lot of you guys have been messaging me about needing a partner. The partnerships that you guys selected last week with Willene are available on the Slack. I mean, oops, not Slack. They're available in the middle school agenda. I'll probably Slack it to you guys too, like screenshot a picture and share it. But if you guys have any changes you need to make or any changes in partnerships or you're, you don't have a partner, I need to know. So for partners, I have Carson and Leo. I have Shannon and Zach. I have Emily and Natalie. I have Miriam and Lily. And I have Nick and Daniel. Is that the only people who plan on competing for Saturday? No, I can. Uh, I plan on competing. Me too. Cool. That's Ella and Eliana? Yeah. So you guys will probably be partners, it looks like, then. Ella and Eliana. Ella, Mishra. And feel free to exchange contacts with each other if you guys see your partner and stuff. And everybody, for the most part, should be on Slack. No, your partners are not going to be the same as Saturday. That was just a practice debate, unless your partner showed up and you were lucky enough to, com to compete with them. 
Eliana, what's your last name? H. Horn. Got like you. Horn. With the E at the end? No. It's no. Actually horn. <laughs> I got you then. <laughs> So you guys are going to be a hybrid. So what I mean when I say hybrid, because you guys don't go to the same school together, like I said, Willie, like Willie showed you guys, instead of looking for, example, Parkside and then your last names, you're going to look for a mix between both of you guys' registered schools. So if you're not a registered school, like Willie said, we'll have you under another school registered, and you'll have your last name initial there, and we'll let you know that before tournament, how to find yourself. Okay. But you, you two are partners. Anybody else I'm missing as partnerships? Natalie, it looks like you're, you need a partner too. I think Natalie and Sophia need one. Or, am I wrong? Are you guys competing? I am, yeah. Okay. So Natalie, I'm gonna need to find you a partner. Anybody else from middle school? That doesn't have a partner or you don't see your name on that list or you didn't hear your name and you plan on competing on saturday i don't have a partner who you said that madeline do you plan on competing do you yes okay so madeline you're going to be with kennedy then you guys get to know each other um i also don't have a partner hold on madeline davidson So, and you guys are going to be a hybrid. And then I had Virginia, you just said you too? Virginia Clark. Yeah. Got you, mamas. Hold on. You might be paired with Sophia, Virginia, because I don't see Sophia on here either, and we should have enough. Okay. Anybody else? If you're missing anybody, let me know. If you're like, I'm missing my partner, I don't see myself, let me know. If you guys ever want to edit it or something's going on, let me know. All right, y'all. So reach out to your partner. You guys can Slack them. Everybody should be on Slack. If you don't see your partner on there, you can let me know. We could try to get their email from the registration form. But everybody should be on Slack. Any questions about partnerships and preparation, you guys? If for some reason you do not have a partner, you will go Maverick. Maverick just means going by yourself. I know it sounds scary. It's really not. It's just now you don't have to work with nobody. It's all on you, girl. Even better. <laughs> like, I don't have to negotiate with nobody. I run the game. So don't, if you're ever by yourself or you ever are the person that has to go Maverick for some reason, don't stress yourself. You're still going to be ready. And you guys are all going against each other. So everybody you see in this chat is your competition. So, so I know that before we went through it, as far as like evidence, when we first, first started the um, season. So for the last hour, I just wanted to go over what is the AV case for you guys? And what is the NAG case and how to start making your cases um, for you and your partners, right? So you're probably wondering what is the difference between the one and the two, right? And you're gonna hear this a lot. The difference is the one speaker is supposed to be your, is, is gonna be your opening statement person, right? They're the argument, they're the arguer that wants to say, what are we even here to discuss? Why is it a problem? And what are the solutions you plan to put forth? So this person doesn't necessarily have to be the most passionate about the situation, right? So maybe you have a topic you don't really like, you should be the one because you're just going to be reading evidence, right? I'm the person that's just building the foundation. I don't have to be persuasive. I don't have to do that. I have to be the one that sets the foundation. That is the one. Madeline, I think so. If you check that agenda that we're on, you should be able to see who your partnerships are. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, so... That, that is who should be your um, one speaker. So then you have, who should be your two? Your two should be like your closer, right? They should be the persuasive one. They're the one that wants to bring home to your judges, why do you deserve to win, right? So if you're that persuasive speaker out of you and your partner, if you notice that, that, hey, I think I can really handle the two and bring home the close of the case, then you should be the two. 
So even though you'll see on the partnerships, like it just says one and two, if you feel like you're better at being the one on certain cases, then you should say that. If you feel like you're better being at the two, you should say that and negotiate that with your partner and just let me know. Any questions about setup of how to split up the roles? Um, so do we have to prepare an argument for both um, affirmative and negative side? Since we're... You said prove an argument? No, just like form our argument. Like we have to write stuff, but yeah. do we have to do it for affirmative and negative? So the strategy would be to be to, to do both, right? So you cannot predict how the round is going to go, but you can kind of make ideals as to what you think that they are going to do, right? So they might not say, so let's say you have a booby trap in Medicare for all that if they decide to run Medicare for all and you're negative, you prove that it'll do more harm than good. Well, let's say that they don't actually ever run that, that card that you're trying to link them to. That's, that's not a strategy you can use. But if they did run it, you would already have those cards ready to run it against them. Questions so far about that? So the strategy would be, so your one cases, you can always make ahead of time. If you're a one, you should definitely make your blocks before. And your blocks are already made for you guys. You just have to go in the evidence. We're going to scroll down to page. If you click your evidence on page four is where the case for the pro side starts. So if you're the one, you should be pro. That if you are the one pro side, that is where your case starts. So you are more than welcome to break that up and do it like that. So then from the case, um, as you guys see, so the first card says pro case. The United States federal government should enact the Medicare for All Act of 2019. And then it says, in short, a short introduction and get your judge's attention. Try to quote a famous or important person or statistic that is shocking or story related to the topic, right? So what that means is, what is a, like something shocking about a number of how many, um, how many people are uninsured in America's healthcare system currently, right? So let's start with that research. Somebody look up how many people are uninsured in America. Cause that's like a shocking quote you wanna be able to tell as to why Medicare for all is important. Somebody tell me just how many people are in America are uninsured. Uh, 27.5 million. And how many people live in America? Three hundred twenty-eight point two million. Since the two thousand nineteen. So is that a lot of people that are not insured to be living in our population? And and so a deeper quote would be like. What is the cost of emergency room services on America's healthcare system? That is an unintended ex expense, right? This isn't something we plan for to, that everybody relies on um, the emergency room as their primary care. So what would be something like a, a quote that you could use as to how, many, how much money we spend on that right now? And you guys can put whatever quote you want to into that box. If you're like, what do I put there? You can put whatever quote you want to into that box. I'm just giving you guys examples of that shocking connector that it's looking for. Questions? No? So I'm gonna keep going then. If everybody's good, give me a thumbs up and we can continue on. Thumbs up, got you. So we're gonna continue on then. Oh wait, um, so for the um, beginning, we basically just get like a certain piece of evidence that will um, basically catch your reader's attention or your judge. Yep, like, a, like when you're writing an essay, you want that introduction, um, that introduction line to catch them that, that intro line of like your sandwich or whatever they be saying, that's what that is. So that's why I was giving you examples of like, what are some good quotes or things that catch their attention as to why Medicare for all would be important. Okay, thanks. Any questions so far? Continuing on with that. So then it says, my partner and I firmly affirm the United States for all. Um, 
the United States for United States federal government should enact the Medicare for All Act of 2019. Your three arguments on the pro side. So again, this will be for both one and two. Your three arguments for the pro side of why we should do Medicare for All is going to be one, medical for Medicare for All improves the quality of research. Two, Medicare for All decreases medical discrimination, and three, Medicare for All saves people from bankruptcy. Those are going to be your three main arguments as to why we should do the resolution, which is enact the Medicare for All Act of 2019. So those three reasons are just saying why you think that we should do the plan that you're putting forth. And this is if you were pro. So then if you continue to go on to page six is where the argument starts. You're going to see where it says contention one, Medicare for all improves quality of research. So that is your first argument. And you see that box again below where it says summarize the evidence below and put it into your own words. So what that means is you're going to read the card. And when I say card, I mean that paragraph of information below. You're going to read that card below and highlight the information you think, again, the highlight the information you think helps you prove the point that this case, that this card is trying to make. So it says, Medicare for all improves the quality of research. We're gonna all read this card and you guys are gonna pick out sentences that you think proves that point that, that, um, that is highlighted up there, right? So you're just reading that paragraph and you're gonna pick out some things from there that you think stick out to prove the point of that card. Who want to share if once you guys are done anybody can share i'm so confused like what point are they trying to uh get across like where they i, I don't really understand like what they mean by this card uh, is it improving of drugs over time yes so that's a great point so the card is basically saying, and that summary sentence is the summary of the card, that Medicare for all will improve the quality of research. So it's basically saying like pharmacists will be more likely to, um, to invest more money into, uh, into innovation drugs, meaning that research and development, as opposed to marketing, because it will be handled by the government. So that's what it's saying. So it's saying like the last time we had ther therapeutic games out of the 2018 drugs approved by the FDA, the FDA is the um, federal drug administration. So everything that we eat has to get approved through them unless you're on Instagram buying flat tummy tea, that's illegal. It's not illegal, but it's not approved, which is why they all get sick. So um, the FDA is there to like stop you from getting sick and putting stuff and anybody making stuff in their bathtub and giving it to you. So they're saying like out of the 218 drugs approved by the FDA from 78 to 89, only 15.6 were judged as important therapeutic gains. So that means out of the 218 drugs that people put in patents um, and wanted to get approved, that only, only 34 of them were judged as therapeutic gains. That means like they weren't helping anybody. They weren't moving the dial forward. Many of them were just copying already made patents. So that's what it's saying. This card is saying that if it was better funded, we would be able to have more drug innovation meaning they will put their money there. Any questions about just that little paragraph so far? So then it says, since the mid 1990s, the independent reviews have also concluded about 85 to 90% of all new drugs provide few or no clinical advantages for patients. 14 through 19, this small steady increase in clinically superior drugs contrasts with the FDA granting priority review status to 44% of new drugs from 2000 to 2010. So this is saying of all the ones that, again, got approved from the FDA, only about 34 of them were moving science along to better help people and be more, um, more beneficial to humans because the rest were just about marketing and getting more people on their medication, a different brand. So innovation is a big thing, right? So then you have contention two, which is just saying, just saying point two. And that's going to start on page seven. Contention two says, oh, I'm sorry. And the way you guys read cards when you're in rounds is you would read it like this. Contention two, 
Medicare for all decreases discrimination. You would read that quote that you put in the box of evidence, and then you're just going to read according to Sachs in 2020. You don't have to read where it came from, www.whoopdewoop. That stuff is just there so that people, if they get the evidence from you, that they can also look up that evidence that you can't say my uncle gave it to me on Facebook, and we don't know who your uncle is. You wait, guys know what I'm saying? Uh, so we, you would say it according to light in uh, 2012, and then you would just write your summary. And yeah, then and you would it. and you would read your summary, yeah. and you would you can if you have time. If you see something in that card that you feel like needs to be read, you can highlight it and read that in there too. Okay, so that's all you say basically. You don't say contention one. You yeah, contention one, and you read it. Contention two, like so, I'm on contention two. I would get up, I would have my paper, I'd say, contention two, Medicare for all would decrease medical discrimination. I would have a quote, you know, that eye opening or summary of what the card is saying. I would have that in that box. I would read that. And then I would say, this is according to Sachs in 2020. Any questions about that so far? If I'm going too fast, let me know. And don't worry if we don't get through all of negative next week. We'll start at the top of practice with a negative, and then we'll uh, end the practice with doing a practice debate before we close out. So don't worry if we don't get through it. We'll have plenty of time. So Medicare for all would decrease medical discrimination. So who knows what medical discrimination is when I say that? What does that sound like to you? That sounds like to me that like some, some groups either by race or religion would not be getting as good health care as maybe another group. Right. Leo, I mean, Daniel, you had took yourself off mute. What were you going to say? Uh, basically, same thing. It sounds like they, like, uh, from what I know, it's like the Medicare people rejecting uh, ethnic type people mm -hmm. and what it, like so that's pretty important right medical bias is important so like medicare so just reading the card and again if you see something that you think is important from this card highlight it so that when you're in round you're not fumbling through your stuff your case is already made and the, like i said the more you spend time with this evidence pack the more familiar you'll become with it and it'll be a breeze when you're reading through it you'll know what you're talking about so this card says Medicare is the most popular health insurance in the country. Medicare is federal funded health insurance. So if you don't know what that is, that's what they're saying. Everybody is on it. It's the most popular version of health care most Americans have. Black Americans should take particular pride in it, as Dr. Monty Cobb said, by led by mostly black doctors. He's saying that just as hospital integration in 1966. Medicare for all can be a major step toward eliminating racism and racial inequalities. With everyone in the same system, everyone will be eligible for high quality care. By cutting the connection with employment, no one would lose their coverage if they lost their job. Everyone could get care during the pandemic, protecting their health and that of the public. People with high risk conditions wouldn't feel forced to work just to keep their insurance and everyone could get their necessary preventative or chronic illness care, pandemic or not. That's something you should read. When you say there's medical bias, you should tell them, when I say medical bias, this is the harm I'm talking about. Like deep seated, your children's children, children aren't getting the adequate care. And what does that do for your generational family? Oh, yeah, and we can only use like certain evidence from this card only, not any other outside resources. Before. No, you, so when you move up to varsity, if you're like, I want to compete in varsity, and that evidence pack is available too, varsity has way more cards and evidence and arguments that they make, and you can use theirs. And if you would like to be in varsity, um, all you're doing is learning more evidence. It's the same structure, nothing changes. Just at the tournament, you'll be placed into the varsity division going against others. So check with your partner, but it's the same thing, just more arguments learned. Questions? What do you guys think about that card?
No? I think that everybody should have, um, bleh. I think that there should be no medical discrimination because it's not fair when you can't control your sex or race or whatever, or religion or whatever, because you're not in control of that. And honestly, that's just rude. <laughs> okay. Who else? Anybody else? Um, just doing a partnership update. Uh, Virginia Glock, I now have you with Emily. I had um, Natalie placed in two spaces. So I have now Emily Donahue with Virginia Glock, Natalie Kennedy with Madeline Davison. And again, you guys can message me if that's not correct. Y'all can always change it. Just let me know. Okay. So continuing on with our card. So we're going to, so again, this would be all of the first speech. So then on page eight is your last contention and your last point. And this is your, again, this is that one. So you see how as the one, I'm not really telling you how I feel about this, right? I'm not persuading you or telling you anything other than the facts of what we're trying to present as to why Medicare for all is so important. Questions about that? We all good? Give me thumbs up if I keep going with the card. Thumbs up. So I'm on page eight. So this one says, contention three, Medicare for all saves people for bankruptcy, according to Patrick in 2017. So this is going to say more than more than one fourth of U.S. adults with health insurance were underinsured in 2016, including 44 percent who got their coverage from the federal marketplace and almost 25 percent who got their coverage from employer plans, according to a recent study. So using the data from the Commonwealth Funds of 2016, you can skip all of that, for insurance, um, they found that working age adults who had health insurance for a full year in 2016, 28% or about 41 million were underinsured. So that means that even if people were working, they still didn't have the care that they needed to take care of them. And so that's one way to go bankrupt. And then they say this was up though from 23% in 2014 and only 12% in 2003. So 28% is a jump. It's not like we went down. This is actually us trying to improve. And then it said people in the study who were considered underinsured if they had health insurance plans with high deductibles and high out-of-pocket expenses relative to their income. So what that means is m most people have health insurance either through government insurance, like the state helps you pay for your Medicare, or you get it through your job. An example of this would be like, you guys should ask your parents, like, where did they get their health insurance for you, right? So if you got Medi-Cal or Medicare, and you probably heard your parents say this before, you usually got like a blue card, and you use it for like your dentist or your doctor anytime you go, that's state-funded insurance, right? But for, uh, for some people that have like, if you have Kaiser, that's a private insurance. So if you're like, I go to Kaiser, that's private insurance, which means you have to pay for it. So, and those, when I say pay for it, that pay option ranges depending on what kind of care you're getting, right? So when I was on welfare services and I had to get Medi-Cal, the service for me to go to the doctor and get my asthma pump was $15, right? Which is decent. Same asthma medicine. I've always used everything. It was $15. When I got a job and I was no longer on that, and now I pay for insurance out of pocket, I pay $100 per inhaler. So that's what they're talking about of like, L, I see your face scrunch up. <laughs> so if y'all know the black market for inhalers, let me know, children. But um, that's the difference I'm talking about as far as going bankrupt, right? So if I was to get sick right now, let's knock on wood. If I was to get sick right now and during the pandemic and have to go to the emergency room, y'all would not see Miss Maya no more. <laughs> like, and what would they do for like my son, right? Because I'm also the primary breadwinner for our family. So like that puts our whole household in disarray if I can't go to work no more. So that's what that card is trying to explain. Like people are kind of forced to make these life and death kind of decisions all in the name of healthcare. And is that fair for your working class economy? Like think about when y'all are adults, what is it going to be? Any questions so far? 
Y'all can ask me anything. Slack, you not Slack it. I'm sorry. You can message in the chat. You can talk out loud, ask questions about that one. Okay. So then it says, in conclusion, my partner and I firmly agree that the USFG, you'll hear that abbreviated a lot, just means United States federal government should enact the Medicare for All Act of 2019. We're on page nine, and you're going to give a review of why you deserve to win because you're only persuading your judge. When you're in your realm, I do not care what your opponents think, feel, or say. You are only there to persuade your judge. So you are talking directly to them. So you're like, in conclusion, my partner and I firmly agree that the United States federal government should enact the Medicare for all after 2019. We use these three main points to support the pro side. Medicare for all improves the quality of research. Medicare for all would be a step toward eliminating racial inequalities by giving everyone access to insurance. And three, a large percentage of Americans are afraid of bankruptcy for medical bills, which is also true. Like I just explained to y'all is a possibility. So then on page 10, you'll see there says additional evidence for the pro. So that is where your second person speech is going to start. Those are the cards that they're going to pull. So if you're number two, additional evidence for the pro is you. So not only are you going to be taking notes of what the negative just gave y'all is going to read to y'all, you're also going to have more evidence cards that you can also read to further establish your case. When I say further establish your case, I like how we were flowing. You want to make sure you're keeping track of what arguments are live in the game because a dropped argument, and you'll hear that term a lot, a dropped argument, like one of those contentions, a dropped contention means you agree to it being true. So when I say that, I mean like, if I was to walk up to Virginia and I was like, Virginia, you a punk, and Virginia don't say nothing to me, what are all y'all gonna think? Everybody gonna just think Virginia cool, what y'all think? Wait, can you repeat what you just said? So the way that debate works is like, if you don't answer a contention, an argument, then that means that it must be true. So you have to take notes and flow all the arguments that come because if you don't answer it, it means it must be true. So the example I gave is like, if I was talking to Virginia and I call Virginia a punk and Virginia don't say nothing to me, what are y'all gonna think? It's true. Same in debate. Sorry, Virginia, you ain't no punk. I'm a punk. It's an example, though. So, <laughs> like, so you guys got to get what I'm saying? The same rules apply. Like, well, she didn't say she don't stink, so she must stink. Why? Who else would just sit there and say that? <laughs> like, same thing in debate. So you want to make sure I got all their points to prove, like, none of that is going to happen. And again, the second person's speech is going to start on page 10. So you'll see argument points that say pro, drug prices, you know, Drug prices crowd out valuable drug, de pro drug development projects, which is true. Um, you guys could look up, I think his name was Mike Shrecky. He, he was a guy a couple of years ago that bought AIDS medication from a company that was already producing the AIDS medication for people. But when he purchased it, he hiked the price up about 200% so that, you know, people that most vulnerable population who really depend on that for life saving, you're now telling them that a pill that was $15 it's now $300. And what choice can you make if you need it, right? Like, my life depends on it. What choice do I have but to come up with the 300? So that's what they're talking about, at least the corruption, if you don't. Then it says, Medicare for all would allow the government to negotiate drug prices with, um, with uh, to negotiate drug prices with corporations. So that card is just saying that, um, this since the government would be the one over our medical system, that more people would be apt to having to, um, then more of those pharmaceutical companies would not be negotiating with us, the consumer, but would instead be in, in negotiating with the U.S. government, and they can't haggle the U.S. government because most of these companies are within our own thing, within our country, so they also have other ties as to why that can't go down like that, right? So it kind of forces the pharmaceutical company to come up with a new approach for making money and negotiating drugs. So that's one card that's going to be on page 11. Um, there is a trade off between innovation and market access if prices remain high. So that's another card just further saying drug innovation is important because the trade off of innovation in the market means if they're just making money and they're not making new drugs, then our medicine isn't advancing. They're just making more and more of the same drug, different versions, same drug. 
Um, each new drug brought to the market saves over 11,000 lives each year. Um, then on page 13 are the arguments about racial discrimination in medical. So your, you and your partner can pick through those and choose which ones you want to summarize in your two speech. Um, so this, these cards are Medicare for all would give American access to free mental health treatment, which is especially impactful for the LGBTQ community. So again, marginalized communities that really need health care that don't usually have, um, you all right, Mad Madeline, this would be on the, uh, YouTube by Friday afternoon, this video. Um, this is just saying that like when we give Medicare for all, we're giving mental health treatment available to communities, especially like LGBT communities that are really impacted and dealing with a lot who need those services. So again, helping those minority populations, Medicare for all will provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. So allowing all immigrants to also get health care, um, a part of our population that we wanna help. Medicare for all, will, um, it also says uninsured adults are 25% more likely to die prematurely than those with, with health insurance. So that's important, right? Um, compared to people who don't have health insurance, uh, that's very important to say that they're more likely to die, right? Bankruptcies, that one is on page 14. Again, we are on the second speech for um, ProSci. Two thirds of all bankruptcies are related to medical bills. So think about coronavirus. That's an, an analytical. Analytical means off your head argue, you, argument you can make. Um, when you say that like two thirds are related to medical bills, think about coronavirus, right? If I were you, I would look up how much does it cost if you were to get sick with coronavirus? Like somebody tell me how much it costs. If I was to get sick today, what's the medical bills on coronavirus? Not even talking about the long-term impacts of me having scarring on my lungs. You know, I, I already told y'all I have asthma. What does that look like if somebody gets into coronavirus today? Who pays for that? Look it up, y'all. Tell me. Anybody find the answer yet? Wait, what was the question again? Sorry, how it goes to the restaurant. How, you're fine. How much it, does it cost if you were to get sick with coronavirus? How, what's the medical expenses for coronavirus, right? Um, I just know this on the top of my head. Some. Um, man had to stay at the hospital for like a month and his hospital bill was like over three million dollars can your mama afford that <laughs> like if your mama got sick tomorrow like so that's serious right that's a, jesus christ i gotta wear a mask everywhere <laughs> like that's serious like you don't so that's what you're trying to make in the pro cases like serious change needs to happen and the system is necessary or people are gonna go broke so then your negative case, so if you're on the neg side or con side as it's called, and believe me, you'll be on both sides in the debate. Don't get comfortable. I'm gonna say it again. Don't get comfortable. You're gonna do both sides of the debate. Never get comfortable. Be familiar with both sides, whether you were pro or con, because it's literally that random. So con's case is, the United States should not enact the Medicare for All of 2019 Act right and as a true con you guys are just like congress y'all don't have to come up with a plan and say well here's the plan we should do to help people in these things you're just saying why the plan they have is the devil and it's going to fly into flames if we do it and everybody's going to die nuclear war in true debate style everything ends in nuclear war don't ask me why it just does everybody's going to die Any questions about that? I don't know why debaters go for that. They're like, you can't beat me because everybody will be dead. Like, that's just. Yes. Yes, Nick. That's a great. So Nick, Nick put in the messages. Don't some people use the money that they are saving when they turn around 63 and older and can't get a job? So that's going to be your retirement, right? So your retirement can only go so far. And let's think, if you are paying for children in school or paying taxes on homes or things like that 
your your retirement means you are no longer working. So that is all you got. It's like your savings account. That's all you got. No, you can get a job as old as you want to be. It doesn't mean that they're going to hire you. You can be whatever age you want to be. If you want to be 90 years old in the door grid at Walmart, they, they are able to hire you. Will they hire you is another question. So that's something else that people deal with is ageism. So you'll hear that a lot as people get older and they don't have retirements. Those that don't have retirements get Social Security. Social Security is still limited in how much you can get. So let's think if you were paying, let's say you're an old person renting an apartment, right? Y'all live in the Bay Area. An uh, average of cost of an apartment is about $2,000. Do you think Social Security is paying $2,000? No, if you didn't know that, they're not. You're going to be living in a train, empty one in the back of somebody's house. So these are all things to think about, right? They're saying like, because of that, this system is totally messed up. So I'm just going to start with the contentions for the con. And again, like I said, we'll pick this up next week. So I'm going to just give y'all a snippet and feel free to look at it too. I am on page 16. In the pack, page 16. So the points that the negative is saying as to why this cannot happen is medical Medicare for all would hurt innovation. So, ooh, excuse me. Sorry. That's all of the um, innovation is all the stuff we were just talking about with drugs and development. Point two is Medicare for all is too expensive. So who's paying for this, right? We just said that if you get sick of coronavirus, one person's monthly bill was three million. Now, let's say we have the whole country on that system. Who is paying for that? That's a big question to always ask. Who's paying for that? And then the next one, Medicare for all does not help undocumented immigrants. So remember in our case, that was one of our main points, right? That because if we do Medicare for all, we could help that immigrant population. So negative argument is they will not be able to help them. Right. And then you guys, when you guys get to rebuttals, are going to have to bet out, is it better that we help some or is it more harmful if we help some that the, we'd be putting them more in harm than we than they were before. Than they are currently. So, yeah, um, we're going to stop today on page 16 at the beginning of next week's practice. We'll go over the negative and we'll review it more like we just did in depth with the AF case. So you guys can be talking to your partners throughout the week on Slack, or you guys can exchange numbers, whatever. If you need help getting in contact with your partner, let me know. Um, and I can look at the registration form and get their information for you and get it to you. But that is all of y'all AF case. And that is the first page of y'all negative case. And that is what you guys will be debating on Saturday. Everybody has the exact same evidence and is doing the exact same thing. <laughs>